Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. Canadian Football League's power rankings for week seven came out, and it's a mighty shift in the power rankings. Darren, I want your opinion and the viewers as well. Number one, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, nobody's going to argue that. 6-0, and oh, and like I said, they're off to their best start in 40 to 50 years. They look like they're going to romp to a third straight Grey Cup championship. And for them, you know, and if so, good for them. Number two, the Calgary Stampeders, who lost in Winnipeg on Friday night. It was their first loss of the year. Yes, Calgary number two. That's moved up from, I think they started the season, picked number five. The third-ranked team, the BC Lions. Here's what I find, Darren. Here's a little secret. If you don't play, you can't lose. (laughs) So there's been six weeks, and they've had two buys already. Morning, Dion. How is Denver? That a boy. He caught a ball. He went to a baseball game. Dion's back to head of security here. Did you bring it in here? Bring it in. You got to pick. I'll trust you. I'll trust. Hang on. It's okay. I'll, I'll look after. One Winnipeg, two Calgary, three BC. Like I say, BC was off. They've had two bye weeks through six weeks of play, and they're moving up in the standings. See what I'm saying? Point four, you can't play bad if you don't play at all. Point four, the Toronto Argonauts, who lead the Eastern Division. They beat Canada's team in touchdown Atlantic. Number five, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who are unfortunately sinking. Like you said, when things go bad, <laughs> the fit has hit the sham with Canada's team. They've slipped to fifth. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. The Jets had until Monday afternoon to file club-elected salary arbitration for Pierre-Luc Dubois. They chose not to do that. This leaves it to the Jets and the agent for for Pierre-Luc Dubois to either work out a deal or trade him. To be honest, that kind of stuff loses me. Because I'm like, if you don't want to be here, there's the door. I would tell anybody that. I don't think any winning franchise would do that. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the RP Show here on Game Plus TV and uh, YouTube live streaming. It is your favorite daytime sports and entertainment talk show. And we are coming to you live from the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, Stage Bar specifically. It's our 16th week of residency here, and we'll be here till the end of the month. And before, we, before I go any further, I want to tell you right now, we're going to do more audience participation in today's show than we ever have and right away so just hang on coming up on the program today nhl alum turned tsn hockey analyst carlo koliakobo out of tsn tirana and sean simpson who is from the gola union tsn 1200 radio ottawa sean simpson let's bring in the co-host from the nhl's bermuda triangle darren moose dupont great hair Where are you on that one, guys? There we go. (laughs) How about that? (laughs) How you doing, Moose? Happy Wednesday. What's new in your part of the world? Yeah, happy Wednesday. Doing great. I just look outside to see if it's still raining. I don't know if you've seen any photos of all the flooding that's been going on uh, back in the sweatpants capital, but uh, we got a break for a minute, but I still have thunderstorm warnings on my phone. So we'll wait. Hey, I heard about it. I heard about it, and uh, my farmland was... uh, what I'm told, very grateful for the rain. And it came at a good time, just the right amount. So re- real nice, Clark. Okay, here's the audience participation. Before I get into the quick six show topics, I want to know what you want to talk about. And I want you from all across this country, all 10 Canadian provinces, the 31 U.S. states, get on the text line 902 518 with what you'd like to talk about with these couple things that I'm going to bring up here right now. Pick one. It's not our poll question. Today. You directly tell me, plus the YouTube, because I know a lot of our viewers, all things being equal, would love a lot more CFL talk. And I'm driving around Calgary. I'm listening to sports radio. It is 24-7 Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk, and I get it, but I'm like, talk some CFL, please. I could see why this 
team, the Stampeders, is losing some profile while this league is losing some profile in Canada because it's just nobody's not, not talking about them. And being in, coming from Saskatchewan, you would find it very hard to believe that that would ever even be a thing. But it's a thing. And if you're losing that grip in places like Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Calgary, what the hang is going on in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver? So I'm opening up saying, do you want us to talk about the CFL? Because I got some delicious things here to get to in this warm-up. But also the hockey talk is out there. And, and right now, the Johnny Gaudreau has come out and penned an open letter to the city of Calgary and the Flames. And it dropped today on the Players' Tribune, the player-owned website, which Derek Jeter started. And we'll get into that. But you tell me right now what you'd like, and then I'll sort of delve into the start of the Quick 6 show topics. But the second I strolled through the doors of the casino here at Grey Eagle, boom, the guys are on me about Johnny Gaudreau and where's Kachuk going and as he played his last game. I, that is the vibe. Darren, so uh, like, uh, it would be kind of refreshing. I would think there would be some CFL fans in this country that would be saying, I'd, I'd rather talk about that because you're not hearing it anywhere else. What's on your radar? Yeah, we need a midweek break, uncle, right, from all the <laughs> from all the Gaudreau Kachuk stuff. But then you see the reports and, and, and you saw with uh, Eric Francis going ESPN, I believe it was in St. Louis, um, saying that Matthew Kachuk could be traded within the week. So now it's, you know, you, you almost can't go away because we've got to be on high alert because this trade could go down at any moment. But, uh, oh, like, <sighs> you know when you're in that stress-induced and it's just, like, draining from your whole body? I feel like the city of Calgary just being drained after going 10 days of the stampede and then losing Gaudreau, and now Kachuk might be gone. It's, it's insane. No, 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 no. I don't think you understand. They're hearty people out here. <laughs> they're in it to win it. They're not, they're not getting tired of it. I'm asking if the rest of the country is. But I put on Sports Center this morning, and they got Dave Poulin on there talking about the Flames, and they're still going to be good. I'm like, holy smokes. Holy smokes. And here's another one. Guy said to me today, ah, the Flames should start the rebuild now and suck it for Bedard. And I'm, you're hearing Connor Bedard's name as much as, okay, well, what? I guess they want to talk hockey. <laughs> That's what it is. Holy smokes. Jason and Red, your good morning sports fans and friends tuning in from sunny and warm. Red Deer, Alberta. My cousin Christine in Medicine Hat. Good morning. Still cleaning up the yard from the storm on Monday. Okay, well, I always zero around on this. Rod, that voice in my head, you and Darren talk about what you and Darren want to talk about. And everybody else will follow in line. And that's what we always do, and that's what's got us this far. So, Director Jordan, can you please hit the Quick 6 show horn, please? <laughs> Thank you. I got thoughts on the Gaudreau letter and the potential Kachuk trade, but you're going to have to wait. Number one, we got to start with this. The Toronto Blue Jays ace Alec Manoa dominated on the mound and on the mic while pitching a scoreless second inning for the American League on Tuesday night at the Major League Baseball All-Star Game in L.A., Manoa provided plenty of entertainment as he struck out three hitters and hit one. The American League defeated the National League Stars 3-2 for the ninth straight time. In a game that featured five Blue Jays, Alejandro, Alejandro, Kirk, Santiago Espanol, Vladdy, Jordan Romano, and Alec Manoa. Okay, we can go back to sleeping on baseball until there's a pennant race for the Blue Jays. Okay? Okay. Point two. Canadian Football League, week seven. Let's talk about Canada's game of the week. It's our poll question today. And uh, this was a pretty easy one for me to vote on. Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League, so named by the RP Show. It's brought to you by Capital Auto Mall with dealerships all across the Canadian prairies and Universal Collision Center. Here are your games. Thursday, it's a doubleheader. Montreal at Ottawa. I don't even need to examine the storylines, do we? The Red Blacks still winless this year, 0-5 under Paul Lapolis. The Alouettes with their very cool owner, Gary Stern, trying to turn things around, get their first win under their new coach, Danny Machocha. And then later on, it's a real <laughs> cat fight. Tiger Cats at Lions. Hamilton at BC and BC Place. Friday night, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at the Edmonton Elks. And then Saturday, Tirana at Saskatchewan. I'm voting for the Toronto at Saskatchewan game as Canada's game of the week. It's the rematch of the touchdown Atlantic. 
the spitting controversy involving Duke Williams of the Riders, Shaq Richardson of the Argos. Will Cody Fajardo even play? The Riders haven't practiced yet. By the way, if some of my peeps in the rectangle are covering Rider practice today, let us know if Fajardo even shows up. It's Toronto at Sask for me, Moose. How about you? Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, see what the best game's going to be. And that's probably it for me, too, just based on the storylines. We don't know the Riders' COVID situation, their quarterback. You know, what's, you know, um, can Toronto win another one? The Duke Williams situation. I think there's more storylines. I wanted to say Edmonton, Winnipeg, because Edmonton got a win. And you can find out Taylor Cornelius and are these Elks, you know, really taking steps forward? Or is Winnipeg just going to squash them right back down to earth? But yeah, it's Saskatchewan, Toronto is probably the one. And it's, it feels like it's the prime time game. You know, all the games on NFL Sunday through the day and that one at night, it's the one at the end of the weekend. So uh, I'm excited for it. CFL fans, let's hear from you. Because as we open it up here uh, from our viewers, Darwin Moore says, Good morning from Winnipeg, Manitoba. How come Chevy hasn't done anything yet in free agency? And why is it taking the Pierre-Luc Dubois thing so long? Well, these are all legal matters and so forth. And I'll come back on that. Um, Randy in Winnipeg says, Chevy's having a long nap. From Phyllis in Winnipeg, she says Calgary Flames need to make a big signing to quiet things down. How about Sam Steele? We were talking about that earlier in our pre-show meeting. The Flames could probably get Sam Steele for a bargain. He's from Sherwood Park, Alberta. And let's be honest, okay, okay, this is what they want to talk about, so let's get down to it. The Winnipeg Jets, the second I looked at their roster a couple years when I just, ago, when I decided I was going to get far more into hockey once I left the CFL, I'm like, far too many Americans and Europeans here. Sorry. But that's not those players' fault. In the first round, they had the opportunity to take Seth Jarvis, the local star from Winnipeg, who plays for the Portland Winterhawks. But no, they take Cole Perfetti, Mum's Spaghetti. They always, you want to know why they haven't been active in free agency? Nobody wants to go to Winnipeg. Hasn't anybody told you that? I'm sorry. It's the truth business that we're in. So draft the local player. Seth Jarvis probably dreamt of playing for the Jets as a little kid, but you don't draft him. I don't understand why. You want to go one step further? I'm talking with that security guy at the front. You know him, Darren. We talked about the 89 Flames, and I brought it up again yesterday. I'm going to bring it up again today until somebody tells me that why this won't work. Landy McDonald, Hannah Alberta, Tim Hunter, Calgary, Alberta, Mike Vernon, Calgary, Alberta. And as this guy said, how about all the guys that played on the team that aren't from here but stayed? Joe Newendike, Newmarket, Ontario. Jamie McCown, Hamilton, Ontario. Local guys that want to be here. Why is that not a thing anymore? Because I'm seeing what the city's going through, racked with anxiety over these players leaving because they're Americans and don't want to play here, play here. And I say, why did you draft them in the first place? Yeah, they're great players, 100-point guys. Imagine if they actually wanted to be here, how many points that I had, Moose. How about that? I don't get it. How is local players not a thing? Yeah, you look at Winnipeg and and it's well known that, you know, they're not a top destination for free agents. And it reminds me of like a little hole in the wall Chinese food restaurant. OK, stick with me. You know, nothing fancy on the outside. You, you drive by, you walk by. It, it doesn't give you any idea that it's going to be great when you get in. But when you get inside, it's cozy. The people are friendly. The, the food is delicious and it's your place. And then you keep coming back. That's where Winnipeg's at. I don't know if Calgary's there yet either, but they need to get players in through the draft. And then you've got three, four, five, six, seven years to show them how great it is. And in Winnipeg, the fans are great. The building's great. The organization's great. There's a lot of great people in that city. It's a wonderful place. And once you get inside, that's their job, right? You draft them, and then you got to convince them how great it is so that they stay. Um, but right now, having trouble attracting free agents to want to go to that market. Uh, sure, maybe. We're trying to stay on tap here, but Vince in Winnipeg says Chevy's focused on Minnesota and created a group of players who would come to Winnipeg because it's close to home. Uh, maybe. 
And this is why I said, this is why I said I wanted viewer participation. And I'm like, I want to talk about the CFL. I'm not getting a tremendous pull from the viewers to talk about the CFL. That's just a fact. I'm watching the games. I'm a fan. But the NHL has just taken over. Roger Yee says, good morning from Katepwa. And he's a Calgary guy. And he says, Jordan Eberle is a Calgary kid too. Well, he is now. And uh, I happen to spend good time with Ebbs here in Calgary a few weeks ago. And to be honest, if his career ends in Seattle, and I'm not talking imminently, if he plays the next 10 years in Seattle, he's more than happy with that. He loves it. Not everybody wants to play at home. Some do, some don't. But again, I'm saying I don't know why you would draft Americans and then turn around and be worried about them leaving. I understand that they're the best players, and probably my phone will ring later today with some scout or GM from the NHL or WHL saying, here, Rod, this is why they do it. This way. But nobody said it yet. I would be signing these guys in free agency, let alone drafting them. Because again, with Johnny Gaudreau's letter today, it was nothing. I, you, uh, you didn't read it. You asked me what it's all about. And I said it was nowhere near as salacious as I thought. He seems like a really nice, cute little kid is exactly what he is. And he goes, I love Calgary. It's a hockey city. I love my time there. But with my dad having a heart attack and we are having a baby and with, this is all because of family, we wanted to be closer to home. That's it. He goes, it wasn't culture of the team. It wasn't anything wrong with the city. I love the people. I love the team. It was all because of family, okay? And that actually swayed quite a few people, saying, okay, Johnny, we believe you. We love you. Good luck with your future endeavors. But he's still not here. <laughs> and you lost him for nothing. So I'm saying, I don't know why you wouldn't go after Sam Steele, because if you wanted to go visit family, it's two and a half hours up the road. He'd be back by supper time. I just under, understand why that is not a thing. Uh, Jack Fulton watching <clears throat> in Vulcan, Alberta. I apologize. I've got a little bit of G2G bar stuck in my throat. He says, that's okay, Calgary. The Stampeders are on the road to another potential Grey Cup championship. How about Ted that? in Red Deer says, isn't the game of the week whatever game your favorite team is playing? My game of the week is always the Ryder game. No, I can look at it unbiased and say this is the most exciting game with the biggest storylines and this week it happens to be Toronto at Sask. Speaking of Toronto, Troy Comer's watching there and he says, I heard today that Charles Barkley may defect to the live tour as an announcer. Would that hiring influence anyone to tune in? I would check it out but not sure Barkley would be a long term draw. That's actually in my quick six. So when we come back, we're only like two points into the quick six show topics, by the way. We're going to play deal or no deal. We're going to talk about Hockey Canada. We're going to talk about live and a word on the Canadian Premier League. So don't go anywhere, folks. We're live from the Great Eagle Resort and Casino Stage Bar. We're on Game Plus Television. Perhaps you're listening to the podcast because we're where all the best ones are found, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. 
Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is gonna have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. All right, we are back live at uh, Great Eagle Resort and Casino. Pick it up where we left off, and let's bring in uh, Darren Moose Dupont. On the way today, our guests, both from TSN Radio, uh, TSN Toronto, Carlo Coliaco, Ottawa, Sean Simpson, TSN 1200. We will, I guess, swing back around to the CFL chatter in a moment, but Phyllis in Winnipeg regarding playing in these Canadian cities and so forth. Phyllis says, the demand for excellence is on a whole different scale for Canadian NHL hockey markets, especially the Habs and Leaf fans. Uh, there's, there, <laughs> there's no two ways about that. I don't understand. Would you not agree with, with this, Darren? Every person's different. To say a blanket statement that no Americans want to play in Canada probably isn't right. To say that you, some guys want to play in a hockey mad market, some guys don't want to play in a hockey mad market. It all comes down to a different... Some people don't want to play in Saskatchewan because it's so crazy and you can't get a moment's peace there as a rough rider. Some guys love it. It's an individual case-by-case -case thing. Would you not agree? A thousand percent. Some guys want to go for the football and the stadium and the fan base and that. Some guys want to go somewhere because of the city and the culture and the ability to get on the water and the ocean and that kind of thing. Like everybody's got a different reason for why they would go certain places. And then when you have a family and you get a little bit older and you have a family, they have a different set of things that they're looking for in a city and in a market and things like that. So um, yeah, there is no one size fits all here. Uh, well, we look at our own situation, you know, for almost a half century, I stayed in Saskatchewan because I didn't quite get the offer that I was looking for. I got offers, but not, what I wanted and I wanted to be around family but now my family's grown my parents are gone I want to see what's out there and I'm lucky that I'm in a business where I'm able to make that decision for myself but I always wanted to be around family that's me but a lot of people in our business left right out of high school never came back 
And I respect that too. I guess we should probably just respect everybody else's decision to do what's best for them. Oh, can you believe that might be a thing? Uh, I got deal or no deal coming up. We already talked about this week's games in the Canadian Football League. Before this segment's up, we'll, we'll uh, put this to Darren, the betregal.ca betting lines, and we'll see whether he takes the uh, bet or not. But I'm just going to jump around. I want to get to the Hockey Canada thing here because everybody is talking about it. My phone is blowing up. This was the fifth point in my quick six. Point four was actually going to be Johnny Gaudreau's open letter to the city of Calgary. Point five, St. Louis Blues forwards Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo are the latest members of Canada's 2018 World Junior Hockey Team to state they had no involvement in an alleged sexual assault after a Hockey Canada gala to celebrate the team's gold medal. Hockey Canada has been under intense scrutiny since May when news broke that the organization quietly settled a lawsuit filed by a woman who alleges she was assaulted by eight unnamed players. Four other members of the team, Kale McCarr, Victor Mete, Connor Timmons, and Yona Gajevich, have also publicly stated they weren't involved. Make it five because Sam Steele's agent, Jerry Johansson, released that information, I guess, overnight. I think within the last 17 hours. So this latest investigation was opened up this week, and a lot of the investigative reporters like I say the information is changing almost hourly right are we going to be left in a situation here where the eight players that didn't release statements are the eight guys like I that's the way it looks right that's absolutely the way it looks and because of that I think we are going to know the identities or at least we're going to have a very a fairly certain idea of who the eight players are because you know we see it in our circles right when we're talking about players that haven't released uh, statements through their agencies or or whatever it's like oh are they guilty oh are they guilty everybody will wonder if they were involved because they haven't released a statement doesn't mean that they are but we know the guys that that aren't guilty they're they're all jumping off the ship right so I think by process of elimination, we'll, we'll know fairly soon. Maybe, but even that isn't an open and shut case. And I'll be honest yeah. with you, I can't speak for a lot of these guys. I couldn't speak for Kale McCarr. I had a hockey friend in Manitoba before these guys started releasing their statements saying McCarr was on that team. And I'm like, well, he doesn't seem like the type, but I don't know. Sam Steele. I've known since he was 15 years of age. And this is why I'm sure the comments will go nuts here. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty confident in what I'm going to say with Sam Steele. He is not the type of person that would put himself in a position like this, that would participate in this. That's exactly what his agent, Jerry Johansson, said yesterday. Sam is probably, as a guy who worked in junior hockey for 20 years, the most mature player that I've ever dealt with in my time in major junior hockey and that's just not him but the crappy thing is until he made his statement I just did a quick Twitter search Sam Steele well guess what Darren here's what they're saying now you know why Anaheim didn't make him a qualifying offer now you know why nobody's signing him blah 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 and I'm like and it's a little like that fun yeah like because I know him personally, and I know, sometimes you just know, I know that he would not be part of something like this. But these idiots, jack wagons on Twitter don't know him, and they're dragging his name through the mud. They forced, I guess, him into making a statement. And with regards to the fund, I don't want to say a whole lot about that because I don't know a whole lot about that, especially when the prime minister gets involved and he's making a statement yesterday and he's lashing out at Hockey Canada. I'm not a Trudeau fan in any way, shape, or form, so I don't put any stock in what he says about anything. But with regards to this fund, it just seems to me, it looks to me like the former Hockey Canada employee said they have this stabilization fund that goes back to 2015 to cover uninsured liability cases, which may include historic sexual abuse claims. Every, the media has made it look like, and the prime minister we got a slush fund here. If any of our kids get in trouble for sexual abuse, we can write a check and have them go away. 
That's not what my read of the situation was. It was for a series of uninsured liability, liable situations or accusations or cases. Not limited to sexual abuse. But that's the part that everybody heard. And so I'm not sitting here defending them because I don't know enough. But the second I heard it, I didn't run away like a team of horses like a lot of people are. That's my thought on that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I look at it the same way, right? The fund, I mean, while it includes that and that's the hot topic, people will say that's what it's for. And sure, in this case, that's exactly what it's for. But imagine if something wasn't handled properly at the World Juniors with all the COVID stipulations, right? And there was allegations that you need to have a fund ready for that. Imagine if something happens at any time with travel or with, a, you know, anything like that, you know, God forbid, with the team, you got to you got to fund for that. So um, we've seen situations like that. We'll wait and see where this goes. I don't think it's you know out of the ordinary to have a fund for liable situations like that. Um, but I mean, being used in this situation, I understand why people think this is what it's all about. But there's more to it than just sexual abuse. And that's my point. And I sit there and I look at Trudeau standing at the microphone in Vancouver yesterday. And he did you see his comments? You must have. He's like, I had my son in hockey. And to think that his registration fees went to cover off incidents like this is unacceptable. I'm sure JT actually believes that. But I'm like, Justin, have you ever run a business, owned a business? Do you know the ins and outs of the insurance game? Like, this is a legal matter. (laughs) Insurance documents probably that thick regarding that fund. I, I've covered enough as I, uh, that I want to about this. But I'm just saying people are running off and I think in some ways misinformed. But with regards to those players coming up with their statements, Jennifer at the Four Seasons Sports Palace is watching in the chat. She says, seems like it's already the process of elimination. I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not. Um, Jack in Vulcan, Alberta. Family. Rod, because of the RP show, you have new family. Love you, my friend. Love you too, Jack. Thank you. Phyllis, she says, I don't understand why we don't have more local players on these teams. I wish we did. And again, what do I know? I'm just some jack wagon yakking it up on the old yak box here. I've never been a general manager of a team. I'm just pointing out what I see. And I've been fortunate that I've been able to have face-to-face time with guys like John Paddock in the American Hockey League Hall of Fame, former Flyer and Toronto defenseman. And I said, hey, how come you don't have any local kids on the Pats? I don't like that. And he's like, I don't care where they're from. I just want to win. And they did win. They went to the league final. So I'm like, I'll shut up now. <laughs> He's done that? a great job. <laughs> I think that one kid, Clark, who was the kid, number 13? Riley Woods, does that sound right? One kid. But he was on the Pats, is my point, at the start of the year, yes. So as long as you win, you shouldn't care. But I just, again, I go back to these Alberta teams. And it's not just a flame thing. I said with the Oilers, um, Messier's from Edmonton. Grant Fuhr's from the area. Where was Kirk McLean from? Someone went, I feel like he is a Vancouver guy playing for the Canucks. I don't know. It should be a priority to me. Uh, Trent Bruner in Tirana, he's, or sorry, in Norway. He says, great rant on Hockey Canada without it being a rant. Well discussed and presented. Well, thank you, uh, Trent. I appreciate that. I am... That's just what was rattling around in my cranium about all of this. Just people are running off as usual without all the information, including the damn prime minister. Rod's rant, uh, by the way, for Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, the preferred plumbing, heating, and cooling company of the RP Show. To schedule maintenance or to learn more about our services, call 306-781-2090 or visit us at broncoplumbing.com. As it turns out, more people would talk about the Hockey Canada scandal than the CFL, and I get it. My last point, renowned golf analyst David Faherty. Am I saying that right? Faherty? You know him. Is it Faherty? How do you say it? Faherty. Faherty. And NBC and NBC have parted ways. And according to sources, he is expected to join the Live Golf Tours broadcast. Faraday is expected to be an analyst for the 8 to 10 Live Golf tournaments each year. Live Golf had previously signed former NBC soccer broadcaster Arlo White as its host. The 63-year-old Faraday was part of NBC's coverage of the British Open over the weekend. 
Well, of course, I'm not surprised. I told you what those distiller liquor guys here in Calgary were saying on Sunday. They're like, your show is like the live golf of broadcasting. If people knew, we have people jumping all over themselves to come work and be on this show. That is a fact. The main the public doesn't see that, and I don't care. You and I see it. We're having so damn much fun doing whatever we want to do, which is exactly what Live Golf is doing. So if Charles Barkley goes over there, that wouldn't shock me either. Everybody wants to be part of this. Darren, your thoughts on this point six? They're having a lot of fun, Rod. And David, or David Faraday is one of the best golf analysts on the planet. He's, he's very good. He's got some color. He's got personality, as you say, Schutzpa and pizzazz. We know Charles Barkley has all of that and then some. Unbelievable. And Arlo White, who, you know, I wouldn't have been able to pick out of a lineup, you know, four or five years ago. But Arlo White, if you remember, was the play-by-play voice in Ted Lasso. So he was on the mic. I'm Arlo White. You know, and we apologize for the salty language. Right. That's our low white. So you can go back and watch. He's calling golf now. So, I mean, I think it's entertaining. Yes. Well, I guess the, that's the point. The big corporate brands tend to suck the life and fun out of everything. And with us and live, I just want to have fun. These guys just want to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. And everybody can see how much fun we're having. And now, they, now they're finally starting to get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll be talking local players in the National Hockey League and pro sports and free agency and all the rest with Carlo Coliacomo next. I'll see you next hour, Moose. It's the RP Show. We're broadcasting live from Great Eagle Resort and Casino, Calgary's entertainment destination. We're on the Game Plus television network, live, channel 924 in Alberta and B.C. We're also live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Legend throws 713 yards in a single 
for a football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Back live at Grey Eagle. Concert alert. Sorry, well, concert there, but contest alert. Gear up, Alberta. The World Juniors are back in Edmonton this summer from August 9th to the 20th. Single game tickets are on sale right now at HockeyCanada.ca for as low as $40. Here's your chance to go for free. Text World Juniors right now, all caps, World Juniors, to 902-518-3033 to be entered to win any regular tournament World Juniors game tickets of your choice. We'll be drawing two pairs on Friday. All right, we're pleased to be joined by NHL veteran from TSN Toronto Radio, Carlo Koliakovo, to talk about all things NHL, free agency, and so forth. Hey, Carlo, man, you're smiling. We're following the story of your son, Leo, uh, and coming out in his cancer recovery, man. It seems like a pretty good week for the Koliakovo family. Yeah, it's been a good week, a good month, and a good year so far. Um, you know, a date that uh, we had circled on our calendar for almost three and a half years. And... Uh, we're very grateful, very fortunate to hit this milestone in his uh, in his life, in his treatment process, and really grateful for all the the support and you know all the the, the friendships that that we've um, garnered along the way, and uh, couldn't be more thankful for everyone's help and uh, especially uh, you know the, the the support we gained around family and the hospitals and stuff like that. So um the messaging is the messaging has been overwhelming um and we're just really thankful to be at this point right now so thanks good to hear prayer works carlo i mean not like i don't know and we all don't know your hockey db but i looked it up again we're, we're talking about local players Gaudreau leaving here kachuk potentially leaving here both americans mm -hmm. you were a toronto kid drafted by the leafs debuted with the leafs why wouldn't every team draft local players if they could because here it just seemed like it was just a matter of time before these two left town well when you say why wouldn't every team draft them i mean that's the that's the reason why we have a draft right those players probably aren't available when it's your time to select um but clearly i think we're seeing a movement right now in hockey where there's a lot of players that are in, investing their futures into returning to play closer to home and how can you blame them um you know, I, I can't speak on behalf of any of those players that are involved in making those those decisions. But as a player like myself, who was lucky enough to start my career in the city that I grew up in and playing for the team that I grew up watching, uh, was a very fortunate experience for me and something that, um, you know, I really value as, as part of uh, something that has become a long lasting memory for me and something that. I wish would have been a little different, to be honest with you. I wish I could have reversed, um, you know, where I played in Toronto in my career. Uh, maybe a, a place that I could have finished near the end of my career because it seemed like near the end of my career, they were a better team than when I started in the NHL. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, hard to, um, it, it's hard to explain, you know, the investment that goes into being a professional athlete um, because people just look at it as, as you know, something that people and players or athletes enjoy doing just because it's a sport. Well, it's a full-time commitment. And not only is it a full-time commitment to, you know, to be the best player that you can in the sport, but it's a full-time commitment away from your family. And sometimes that's the most difficult part, especially when you're at a point in your career where you're starting your own family and all you want is, fam is family to be around. So I respect it. Um, you know, I never judge guys for making their decisions when they choose family into making their decisions but maybe this is providing a different way of or a different avenue of the way we look at players 
um, you know, moving forward here and, and, and how much to invest in their futures. Well, the Flames have kind of been dragged through the mud, and this week they've been largely pretty quiet, really, since Johnny left. They put out a thank you, Johnny, tweet, which I thought was really classy this week. Now it's all about Kachuk. But the fans are going nuts. For instance, Ben in the chat says, rest in peace, Calgary Flames. Can you please, unless you think they're going downhill, like I, I saw you on Sports Center, the clip they played. You got, they're yeah. still going to be good. They're a playoff team, Carlo. I mean, come on. Paul, Ron, it's, it's hard to predict that, right? It, it, as on July 20th, you know, without the season starting tomorrow, um, it's hard to predict where they're going to be because if you're talking about a team that most people predicted when the playoffs started that was going to make a Stanley Cup run to six weeks later losing a Hart Trophy candidate in, in, in Johnny Goudreau and their next best player, Matthew Kachuk, I, I, yeah, I think you're going to look at a significant drop-off here. Um, I think the, the positives that you can focus on here for the Calgary Flames and their fans is they still got one of the best goaltenders in the league and they still got one of the best coaches in the league. And those are two things that can help rally, you know, a team situation. I think losing Johnny Gaudreau for nothing definitely hurts because there is no replacing him in the, in the UFA market. But you can definitely not lose a guy like Matthew Kachuk for nothing. And I don't know how this situation plays out, but based on some of the speculation we're hearing right now about his future, it doesn't sound very promising. It doesn't sound like he's a guy that wants to invest being there in their long term. And I think that's the tough decision that Calgary has to make right now is what's in the best interest for the team moving forward, not just for next year, but for years down the road, because you can't lose both of those guys for nothing. You have to bring back something of added value that keeps you competitive. Troy Colmer in Toronto watching. He says, I listen to Carlo and AK on TSN 1050 every day on my way to work. Great talent and is very knowledgeable about all sports, not just hockey. I appreciate all his work in the media. I guess Thank we have two you. minutes left Thank here. You, Carlo, <laughs> who, who is the most coveted free agent in your mind right now that's left out there? Well, I think Nazem Kadri is a surprising name to me. I mean, the fact that we're a week removed from free agency and he's the guy everybody, you know, grew to love in the playoffs because of how heroic he played coming back from an injury that nobody expected him to come back from. And, you know, being removed from Toronto where, you know, the comment of, of him telling everybody to kiss his, you know, what in his post game Stanley cup celebration speech, um, you know, there was a lot of question marks around the trust that Nazem Kadri sort of lost with the organizations he was playing with. I mean, twice with Toronto, once with Colorado, and it's great to see him go out as a champion. And to sit here a week later and still not see him find a spot on a team, I don't think it's because nobody wants him. It's just maybe there was a misjudgment here on, on the market and what teams potentially had the room to fit him. And I think right now he's evaluating his options and maybe not too thrilled about the options that are available. And I think he's... Ultimately, him and his agent are trying to find a way to go back to Colorado because ultimately, I think that's the best place for him to be. Another intriguing name is John Klingberg. You know, this guy can can help reshape any team's goals on defense because of how he can produce from the back end. So I know those are the big market guys going into free agency, but the fact that a week into free agency, they're still available, I think those guys can change you know, any team that they land on and the projections of where those teams may see themselves from now and, and to the, the time when they do add one of those players and how much better they can improve their team. Carlo, a wonderful visit, a wonderful update. Again, congrats on uh, the journey with Leo. I'm glad to hear where it's going. And I smile every time I see you on Sports Center, my friend. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of summer. <laughs> thanks, Ron. I always smile coming on this show. Great to see you again. And thanks for having me. Thank you, pal. Carlo Koliakovo of TSN 1050 Tirana. Sports update next. Taco time viewer takeover as well. We're live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino on the Game Plus television network. We're also live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
Nestled in the scenic Coppell Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Sports update time. The reviews were mostly negative for the second straight year on uh, Tuesday night's Major League Baseball All-Star uniforms. The AL, which won for the ninth straight time, wore dark gray uniforms that blended into the plate umpire's black shirt and dark gray pants. <laughs> the NL, NL wore all white uniforms. Both had gold lettering. Fans were extremely critical on social media with atrocious, a frequent critique. Two years ago, we're fighting our way through a pandemic, and now they're bitching about that. Sports update, by the way, is for Edo, Japan. The head of the Baseball Players Association is worried about the sport's increased commercial deals with sports gambling companies. Union executive Tony Clark said the sport is entering a delicate and dangerous world as it pertains to gambling. A bet MGM retail sports book opened this year at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C., and DraftKings is building a sports book scheduled to open next year at the southeast corner of Wrigley Field in Chicago. Clark said bookhouses are already starting to follow players closely on social media. Tony Clark, don't know what he's talking about. Union executive, Major League Baseball, Tony Clark. Uh, where would baseball be without 
beer sponsorship. Let's eliminate that and all the bars in the stadiums, too. Nine out of ten people can handle alcohol responsibly, just like nine out of people can handle gambling responsibly. Tony, you're supposed to be benefiting the players and making them more money. Smarten up. There will be a rare doubleheader when the CFL kicks off week seven of its regular season Thursday night. The Montreal Alouettes will be in Ottawa to face the still winless Red Blacks in the early game, while the 1-4 and four Hamilton Tiger Cats will be in Vancouver to play the 3-1 and one BC Lions in the later game. We'll play deal or no deal with Moose next hour. Coincidentally, for bet Regal, talking about week seven in the CFL. This sports update for Edo Japan. Edo Japan's fast and friendly service plus online ordering options is easy and convenient when you're on the go. So from the viewers, actually the text line's open and a flood of guys and gals entering the World Juniors contest, by the way, from all over Canada. But Ward in Winnipeg writes in and he says, Hi guys, the Jets lost their identity and mojo when Dustin Bufflin walked away from the team. Go Bombers! That's from Ward, who clearly is watching on Game Plus Television in uh, Winnipeg. And well, here's the thing, how do you blame the Jets for that? How do you blame the Flames for Johnny Gaudreau walking because he because for family reasons, and maybe losing Kachuk for family reasons. And in the case of Buffalo, he wasn't drafted by the Jets, as you all know. Won a Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks and then <clears throat> couldn't come back because of money. But, but again, how do you blame Chevy for that? When Ward says that, and if you line things up, and as Moose says, follow the breadcrumbs, everything turned when Buff pulled the pin. There's no doubt. Spit happens. Um, what are you guys talking about here in the chat? From Ryan in Toronto, he says, the inside scoop is so valuable. Gotta love the RP show, guests. Well, sometimes, I, you know, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Moose has one, hates when I say that, but I'm always going to say it. I would hope these general managers are on top of the local player thing, but not all of them share that philosophy. In Saskatchewan with the Rough Riders, the year we won the Grey Cup in 2013, I think we had 13 players from Saskatchewan on the team. It meant a lot. There's a lot on this year's team, but I don't think there's 13. The Argos that year had more. They had 16 players from the GTA. Not every GM even agrees with that. From Jennifer, what? Players want to be treated as people instead of just property now? How dare they? Last minute of play in hour one. Last minute of play. But that's the point. People have changed. Players have changed. Jennifer, the people where you work at the Four Seasons Sports Palace have changed. Working for your employer is no longer, well, Al Tour said it to me in the 90s. House, coach and GM of the Moose Joe Warriors. It used to be an honor to wear this jersey. Now it's an option. It's been going back 25 years. Are you adapting and rolling with it? Or are you staying stuck in the old way? And what way is that? Yeah, we will uh, get into this more next hour. Deal or no deal coming up. Sean Simpson from TSN 1200 Ottawa. And the Moose will be loose. We'll be right back after this break here on Game Plus TV. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. 
Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's Lifeline. next adventure and it starts at capital gmc custom order the perfect new vehicle for you or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way can't wait get into a gm certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock plus the american export event is back and bigger than ever we'll send your vehicle south making you the most money for your trade guaranteed oh and for a limited time all name brand tires are employee priced only at capital gmc your adventure starts here Grey Eagle Resort and Casino Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. The Rod Peterson Show. The Jets had until Monday afternoon to file club-elected salary arbitration for Pierre-Luc Dubois. They chose not to do that. This leaves it to the Jets and the agent for, for Pierre-Luc Dubois to either work out a deal or trade him. To be honest, that kind of stuff loses me. Because I'm like, if you don't want to be here, there's the door. I would tell anybody that. I don't think any winning franchise would do that. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hour 2 of the RP Show. Coming at you live from the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino in beautiful Calgary, Alberta. Voted the third most livable city in the world. It is a Wednesday, last I checked, July 20th. And uh, I'm just checking the poll results. I'll get to those in a moment. I was prepared to go it alone here for a bit because they said the Moose hadn't logged back in yet, but we now do have the Moose with us. So let's do it. He is in the NHL's Bermuda Triangle right now. I'm in Calgary's entertainment destination. There's the Moose. And, uh, man, are we covering a lot of ground today, Moose. It's, it's real sports talk, which one of our consultants said, that's what you should probably uh, use as a slogan, real sports talk. And I'm like, well, maybe. But... None of what I had in my quick six, Darren, is what we got down to. We're, the topic of the day, the theme, as you've seen, because you've been part of it, and for the viewers that have just tuned in or just started listening to Hour 2 of the podcast, is local players, do you want them on your team? How do you get them on your team? This is such a delicate balance, because if anybody had figured it all out, they'd win the Stanley Cup or Super Bowl every year. And as I said, you know, I wanted to talk far more CFL today, because that's what I wanted to talk about. But I put it over. I put it into the viewers' hands, and they just ran away with it with hockey. And I get it. And just a couple of uh, viewer comments. Young Hoggy is watching on YouTube right now, Moose, and he says, "Been a Flames fan since '86. In Brad Tree Living, we trust." 
And that's the thing. You wouldn't, I've told you many times what's going on in this town where everybody's dumping on the flames. And I would hope that the flames aren't listening to sports talk radio, not surfing social media. Because there's a, you can, if you really try, ignore it. You can. Nobody does, but you can. And I think that's why Richie Hall has had so much success as a defensive coordinator in the Canadian Football League, four great cups as a coach, one as a player. He literally ignores it all. I've been with Richie Hall. He, he doesn't hear what people are saying. He doesn't care what people are saying. He's just got his headphones on in his own head, bopping and moving and doing what he knows is right, and he wins. But most people are so wrapped up in everything that everybody else is saying. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Oh, don't, I'm not. Somebody's entered the chat who's trying to poop on the parade as we go, Darren, and I'm not going to allow John to do that. But just with the local player thing, uh, it just it just continued. What did you did you catch the Carlo Koliakovo interview? Oh, we lost Darren. We lost him. How about that? Somebody must have logged in on his line. How well, coming that? up a little later on, Sean Simpson of TSN 1200 Ottawa to talk about this and local players coming home. Here's the thing that we're that we're seeing. Koliakovo said it. We're seeing as the years go on in their careers, players are wanting to come home. Claude Giroux, Ottawa Senators. Not every player wants to come home. I'll say it again, Steven Stamkos. I know this for a fact. Toronto kid was considering signing as a free agent with the Leafs. And a Leafs great talked him out of it because he said, hey, you got the world by the nards in Tampa. Why would you want to come home and deal with your family wanting tickets and you can't go out anywhere and if you're photographed having a beer somewhere at a golf tournament, all of a sudden you're an alcoholic and all the drama. Just stay in Tampa and love it, man. And he did. So not everybody wants to come home, but you just... I, like, I got to think these NHL GMs or any pro GM is sitting there, I would hope, not just dealing with the agent when it comes to free agency, but talking to the player themselves and saying, why do you want to play here? Why wouldn't you want to play here? What do you think about our team? And sometimes I wonder if that actually happens as much. From Jeff in Winnipeg, he says, I was one of many who wanted Richie Hall out of Winnipeg a few years back. <laughs> just one second, continues to eat shoe. That's why oh, I do listen to too many people in the bunk that's out there. Like I, and I'm, the NHL free agency stuff is getting a little too crazy. And the trade talk, because everybody's sending me, did you see this? Did you see that? Did you hear this? I'm like, no, I'm trying to ignore it all, because it's BS. Some guy writes me yesterday, I, I don't know, see Sam's, Sam Steele's name's coming up in this Hockey Canada thing. Within hours, Sam Steele's agent, Jerry Johansson, sends out a statement and says, our client, Sam Steele, had nothing to do with this incident, which I know Sam personally. I just don't want to hear the bunk. But for two hours a day, we'll sit here and we'll talk about it. But beyond that, I don't. And I do listen to the Calgary Sports Radio for Entertainment. What else am I going to listen to? But sometimes I wonder if they, I don't think they know any more than the next guy either. How would you know if Matthew Kachuk's upset that Gaudreau got away for nothing? How would you know what Kachuk's saying? They thought Johnny Gaudreau was staying right up until July 12th. Johnny thought he might have stayed until July 12th. So how could anybody say which way they're leaning? Where is Moose, by the way? Hello? Am I still on the air? What's up with Moose? What's going on? So our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, because as I said at the start, I wanted to come in here today and talk about the Canadian Football League. And I really feel like I've been in the minority. But the poll questions for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center... And it is, which is Canada's game of the week in the CFL? And your options are Montreal at Ottawa, Thursday, first of a doubleheader, Hamilton at BC, Winnipeg at Edmonton, and Toronto at Sask. And right now, the Riders and Argos are running away with it with 46% of the vote. But I, if I was the CFL, I would be scared spitless. I mean, here, they're not, they're not even talking about them in Calgary at all. You wouldn't even know they had a team. And I see why that Jayla came up to me in the mall and said, more stamps coverage, please, more stamps talk. You're not getting it anywhere. 
Anyways, they tell me, Moose, that you're back. Is that a fact? I guess so. Okay. Apologies what happened to your computer? What happened? I think something happened with our video call setup. Every other site I was logging into looked like it was working except this one. So I'm not sure. Gotcha. Well, are you ready to play Deal or No Deal? Yeah, let's go. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, deal or no deal. We do it every week for our exclusive betting partner, Bet Regal, who happens to also be the exclusive betting partner of the Canadian Football League. Every week, we go through the betting lines as set by the odds makers at Bet Regal, and we put it to Darren whether he'll take the bet or not. So let's go. Game one, Montreal at Ottawa. The Alouettes are favored by 2.5. Deal or no deal? Deal. Yeah, I think Montreal will win. I am not. I'm taking Ottawa to get their first game for Lapo because they are at home. Later that night, cat fight. Hamilton at BC. Tiger Cats at Lions. The Lions are favored by eight. Deal or no deal? No deal. I think the Lions will win, but I think eight's a little bit too big. I'm taking the deal. Clearly the healthiest team in the CFL of the BC Lions. They've had two bye weeks in the first six weeks of the season. Friday night football, Winnipeg at Edmonton. The Blue Bombers are favored by 7.5 points on the road. Deal or no deal? I'll take the deal. Yeah. Uh, Home has not been a kind place to Edmonton. Me too. And in Canada's Game of the Week, as voted by our viewers to the RP show, it's the Toronto Argonauts at the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The Riders are favored by five. Deal or no deal? <laughs> it all depends if Cody's going to play or not. I want to say deal, but we're so uncertain. So I'm actually I'm going to say no deal on this one. I'm going to go no deal. I said no deal. <clears throat> you know, from everything. Well, I'm sitting there reading the social media, talking to people in the homeland. Oh my God, our quarterback's done. We got we got, we got no old line. <laughs> not happy unless they're unhappy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Happy to say that the sky's falling. So, no, no deal. Sask favored by five, and I think Toronto goes in there and wins. But as I said last hour, and I'll say it to our viewers here now, any of my spies in Sask, as Saskatchewan reports to practice today for the first time this week, let us know who's out on the field there. Is Cody Fajardo practicing? Because I don't know, again, I'm getting pretty good at turning my phone off and ignoring the world. You know, right after the game in Touchdown Atlantic, Cody Fajardo, Saskatchewan's beloved quarterback. Well, he's my beloved quarterback. I don't know if he's Saskatchewan's beloved quarterback. Telling the media his knee feels terrible. And it's a major setback, as quoted by the media. And then the coach on Monday says it's a 50-50 chance whether Fajardo plays on Saturday or not. And I'm like, well, how terrible was it? How big of a setback was it? You can't get the straight answer out of anybody. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. You know, it's like if it was a major setback, we're talking about season ender potentially. But We're talking you know, about blank, Cody, blowing out all three knee ligaments. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Cody had talked about he could play through it, but he was probably a week or two away from being back to 100%, and now he gets a setback. Does that mean it's going to take another four or five weeks, but he can still play through it? Does it mean that he's going to have to take some time off, go for surgery? I mean, we want to, we want some answers here. It's 11-11 Mountain, by the way. I just looked. Oh, Beautiful. the best... The best chapter is here. You're living it. Jason in Red Deer writes in. Jason in Red Deer says, like I said off the top, hard to pick a CFL game of the week this week. No really good matchups. I choose the Bombers versus Elks because I really hope the Bombers lose. LOL. Respectfully disagree. Again, Montreal at Ottawa, trying, each team trying to get their first win for the Owls under their new coach for Ottawa for the, for the season this year. Unfortunately, Hamilton at BC is not the sexiest matchup of them all. Winnipeg at Edmonton, Chris Jones. Deron Carter making his Edmonton debut. What more do you need to know? Like, I was considering driving up for that. I may still. 
And Toronto at Sask, uh, the rematch of Touchdown Atlantic. Spitgate, if you will. That is the game of the week. It's the largest market in the country versus the most passionate market in the country. What do you mean there's no good matchups? Come on. John in Edmonton says, congratulations to three of the greatest Edmonton Eskimos. Jim Germany, Joe Holliman, and Ed Jones, who will be going up to their rightful place next month, the Edmonton Wall of Honor. Darren walked with me into the, like, what the hell is it? Edmonton Alumni Lounge? How about that? Right? You were with me. Yeah. How about that? We went up there Commonwealth a, a couple weeks ago, and I ran into, by name, Greats Rod Conop, Willie Pless, Craig Ellis, Randy Ambrosi. And I wrote yeah. in my column on the weekend, we talked, we saw all these Elks alumni and it was great. And we get this blazing email comes into our website saying, those are Eskimo alumni, not Elk alumni. How dare you? I'm literally sitting there trying to is it worth trying to be politically correct and trying to go along to get along? What I the know. hell? Are, I mean, on, on one hand, I get it. It's like when the Regina Rams went from junior football to university football, all the guys that had played for the junior team became orphans because they weren't alumni of the university team. So they consider themselves now alumni of the Thunder. So I guess it's just an awkward situation for everybody. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. It is awkward because you never know what you're supposed to say, what you're not supposed to say. The point is we ran into some players who used to play for the professional football team in Edmonton, right? And we had a great time. Forget about what we called the organization or didn't call the organization. It was fun. I don't know how closely, I don't know how closely you were listening to that conversation, but I'm talking to Rod Conop. And um, I saw his name tag on it or something with his yeah. name. I'm like, oh, Rod Connop. I'm Rod Peterson. He's like, I know you, Rod. And, uh, but I had a Rod Peterson show jacket on. I got to think that's why. Um, Wayne. Oh, now the CFL fans have come alive. They've been waiting for this all day. Wayne in Victoria, B.C. If Cody says he's hurt, then the riders should sit him for at least a week. We'll then find out how good Mason Fine is. Just my opinion. Love you, Wayne. You're one of our biggest uh, supporters here. Cody Fajardo is the highest paid rough rider in franchise history. If he's breathing, he's going to tell you he's playing. This situation needs to be taken out of his hands. And that's the heat that's on Craig Dickinson right now is making the decision on that. But it's a, it's a steep drop off from Cody Fajardo to Mason Fine. Every single team in the world, th this is what has not changed in sports. They're going to put the guy out there that gives him the best chance to win. And if it's Cody Fajardo at 60%, it's better than probably Mason Fine at 100%. That, that will never, ever change. And they're only looking at it, I believe, on a week-by-week-by-week -by -week -by -week basis. John Schmeiser in Kansas City writing. He says, Deron Carter was an impact player back in the day, but I think we will see that father time has caught up to him. How do you know that? No, 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 no. No. I'll bet you right now a steak supper in Kansas City, John, that that's wrong. I'll bet you Deron Carter will be better. Help me out, Darren. <laughs> they don't understand. I've talked to Deron. He's a different... We'll talk about that when we come back. And uh, swinging around to NHL, Hockey Canada, Live Golf, whatever you people would like us to discuss. We're live on the Game Plus Television Network. We're live on YouTube streaming, and you can always catch the podcast wherever the podcast, best podcasts are found, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Hi, have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
people donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Another beautiful day here in the foothills. They all are. RP Show brought to you in part by Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions, specializing in improving your company's performance and bottom line through supply chain management services. And did you know Edmonton's hosting the world this summer? The World Juniors are back August 9th to the 20th. Get your tickets today at HockeyCanada.ca. You can get them as low as $40. We'll be broadcasting live from Rogers Place for the full two weeks in this time slot. Considered a pregame show every day for all the games and you can enter right now to get entered to win tickets text world juniors to our number 902-518-3033 to be entered to win any regular games at the tourney uh <laughs> vince, let's bring the moose back in if you don't mind um vince says well we haven't talked about pld in a while and we're not I get that that is all the rage in Winnipeg, Pierre-Luc Dubois. I'm not going down that road. On, on the Duran Carter thing, somebody says here, oh, it's Jack in Alberta. He says, Rod, for the life of me, I do not understand why Duran Carter seems to continually get overlooked. This guy is a superstar in waiting. I'll tell you why. And it's nothing against John in Kansas City who makes, makes the bet. He says, we're going to go to Kansas City barbecue instead of a steak, but he'll take the bet. I said Duran's going to be better than before. Duran is supremely talented. He's a good person, and he's confident, just like Cody Fajardo, just like me. That rubs people the wrong way, specifically those that aren't like that. 
it draws out the haters. I'm not saying John in Kansas City is a hater, but I'm saying in the case of Duran, he's a changed person. We said, how come we haven't heard from Duran all through training camp of this regular season? He's normally jumping in front of cameras. He's normally getting in trouble. He's normally doing all the interviews. We haven't heard a word out of Duran. It's because he's a different guy now. He was out of football for a year. He coached. And the thing with life has a tendency to humble you. I say that all the time. All the things that have happened to me in my life changed me. I'm better for it now. That's my point with Duran. Duran's going to be better for it. He said coaching 30 Duran Carters almost took years off his life. He appreciates the game more. He might have actually, Darren, started working out for the first time in his life leading up to this training camp. Do you think he'll be better or worse when he makes his debut Friday night for the Edmonton Elks? I wouldn't expect him to jump off the page right away, but I think as he starts to, you know, settle into this next chapter of his professional football career. Yeah. I think he has an opportunity to be way better uh, than he was in the past. Obviously he was really flashy and explosive and made some big plays, but the engagement wasn't there um, day to day at, you know, the consistency level. I think we're going to see more of that. I think that's, the biggest change that can happen is you mature and you, and you learn things about life is I think we're going to see a more consistently good Duran Carter. Yeah. And in the case of Fajardo, this is a really bad situation for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders because clearly he is not healthy, but it looks, I guess he's going to play anyways. If he has the opportunity again, haven't got a report from their practice, the team's not going to rest him. They're going to play him until the wheels fall off. You don't rest your most, your franchise player. You don't. They play hurt. And speaking of that, oh my goodness, Moose. How about this one? Headline. Rumor from HockeyFeed.com. Gaudreau gone and Kachuk wants out due to Canada's overly strict mandates and restrictions. Do you even want me to read this, or does the headline say it all? Do you actually think those players would sign elsewhere because of having to wear a mask or social distance? No. Not a chance. I mean, oh, my gosh. It's getting a little I don't, I, thick. I don't want to get off, but, uh, but I'm close. I'm close. Well, you know Stop. what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Hey. And by the way, good friend of mine, Greg Buchanan, Chuck Wagon announcer from Lloydminster, posted that to his Facebook. And, and I'm not going to weigh in and say anything to Bucky, but it's like, do you, act, do you actually believe they're leaving because of COVID restrictions, of which right now there are none? They're manufacturing news now. Well, and right away, you don't even need to provide your proof of vaccination to get on a plane. Coming really soon. So they're literally. I'd be enough. embarrassed. I'd be embarrassed to be sh- sharing that. Um, John in Edmonton says, "Did Saskatchewan have a practice today after yesterday's cancellation due to COVID?" We don't know. The Rough Riders won't send us their news releases nor information, so we don't know. That's why I said somebody that's there send us a report on what's going on with their practice, if that's possible. Uh, completely hairpin turn here, and I appreciate young Hoggy for weighing in with the comments. Says, I don't understand the hate on for the live tour. Tiger saying that players won't have drive since they have guaranteed money. So Jordan, Brady would have been better players if only paid when they won. He's talking about Michael Jordan, Tom Brady. I think young Hoggy is a young viewer. He's watching on YouTube, and I get what he's saying. I think it's very delicious for Tiger Woods to come out and criticize Live Tour, a guy that's made now close to, what was he got, a half, a half a billion dollars in PGA winnings and endorsements. Shoot, 10 years ago we had a half a billion in winnings and endorsements, probably well over a billion now. Tiger made all his money from the PGA. Shocking that he would defend the PGA. <laughs> and you got Phil, who's been exiled from the PGA. Let's just say it for what it is. Where else is he going to go? I find, so he says the hate on, I guess I'll say this, young Hoggy, 
And Darren, please weigh in with your thoughts. Consider the source of who's criticizing the Live Tour first and what reasons they would have for criticizing the Saudi-backed rogue tour. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, it is Tiger Woods, so there is some credibility when he comes comes out and, and says something. You know, he won his money, too, because he, he won and was good and had that incentive and that drive. And I understand it. Like, you know, when you've made, you've doubled your career earnings, you've made a career's worth of money in one paycheck just for showing up. Why do I got to practice? Why do I got to get out of bed? Why do I got to, you know, why do I have to win now? Um, so I, I understand that. But at the same time, I mean, I think there's a there's a world where both these leagues can, you know, golf tours can work together, live together, uh, survive together, even if they are fierce rivals and big competitors. I think that can be good for the game. So, you know, the, the hate the doesn't rogue, come to me. No, the rogue leagues that have split off and died, all died, I don't believe because of lack of popularity, maybe in a way, but it was because of lack of money. WHA, which a lot of those teams just merged with the NHL, the ones that were successful, USFL, XFL, all died because of lack of money. Live doesn't have that problem. And it just dawned me like one of the dawned on me like one of those psh, God shots that I get, Moose. Sitting out here two weeks ago with Cody Snyder of Cody Snyder Bull Busted, and we had a long talk about when the Bull Riders in the early 90s split off from the rodeo and created the PBR tour. It did not go over well. My brother was a steer wrestler team roper on the CCA circuit at the time, and they're like, who do these Bull Riders think that they are? Well... As, it, serious, man. And it worked. Yeah. But as, as I've found out since, because once I got out of my bubble, I realized not everybody watches rodeo like you do or hangs around these guys, but it worked because it's a niche sport. And they filled arenas and filled bar, and they, can, they still compete in the rodeo, but they also have their own event. And as Cody said to me, oh, those timed event guys don't like me, don't like us bull riders because we get all the girls. And I said, uh, those other guys do pretty well too, Cody. And but he said, "There's a reason rodeo bull riding's at the end of every rodeo. It's the best event. People stay to to the end." And I'm like, "Yeah, I can't argue with you there. <laughs> I can't. I'm way off tangent here. But with the live thing, they're not running out of money. And to be honest with you, if you were a PGA backer, you probably should stop talking about live golf." Because, again, as we say in the recovery world, um, the more you resist something, the more energy you give it, the more it remains in front of you. Yeah. They should just shut up about the Live Golf Tour because they're just doing their own marketing for them. What do you think? Yeah, that is a huge part of it, right? You know, the more you, you talk about it and the more you talk them down, the more they can lean in to that bad guy, that bad boy, um, approach and that brand, you know, we've talked about it. it's the NWO, the the wrestling, you know, group, the uh, the bad boys that are coming to take over, and they're going to have a certain section of fans, and they're going to get more popular and more popular, and you know, the PGA Tour can lean into being the good guy, you know, if you want to stick to wrestling, the baby face, and play that role, and they're going to have their fans, and I think you know, you get that rivalry going. I think it could be really good for growing the game of golf overall. I really do. You're going to lose some good players, but you can have these great battles and then you can throw down a challenge and have your own Ryder cup. Imagine a PGA tour versus live Tour Ryder cup. The ratings would be off the charts. It would be so good, but I don't know if they're probably, probably would be a good thing. Max Hardwick, who I believe is in Winnipeg says the PGA is playing right into it. Um, yes, they are. And like I say, working for the big box corporate brand sucks the, a lot of the life out of and fun out of what you're doing. I can pay, listen, for those that are watching that work for the big stuffy corporation, we can't do this because of policy. Yeah, but it's not right. No, but that's what the policy says. When you're working for the mom and pop corner store, it's like, I got to take a day off. I got to take my kid to the doctor. I got to, you go ahead. You know what I mean? It's the difference between the two. Yeah. 
So I get why the Live Golf guys want to go do that. And again, Tiger owes everything he has to the PGA. So no wonder he's going to defend it. And Phil, uh, Phil Mickelson's been banned from the PGA. So what the hell else is he supposed to do? Young Hoggy in Tirana says, great conversation. Thank you, Young Hoggy. And who is this guy? Jeff in the zone writes in and he says, uh, hey, Rod and Darren, any news on which players have COVID for the Rough Riders or their staff? No, Jeff, that's private information. Sorry to burst your bubble. Uh, well, we covered that a lot, Moose. Anything else out of you before we break and bring in our good friend Simmer, TSN Simmer, Sean Simpson from Ottawa, on no. any of these things? Yeah, go ahead. No, but we haven't talked, you know, about the Ottawa Senators a lot, obviously, you know, with our big fan base in Western Canada. But I'm excited for that conversation because the Sens have done some, <clears throat> excuse me, really great things this offseason. You know what? Let's do that. We'll take a break now. I believe we're eligible to do so. Are we not, Producer Clark? So uh, when we come back, we'll get into Sean Simpson discussion a little early. And Moose, I'll see you back here for overtime. You bet. It is the RP Show. You're watching on Game Plus Television, which is available all across Ontario on Rogers and Kojiko Cable. We're also live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. 
All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. We're live from Great Eagle Resort and Casino, Calgary's entertainment destination. And there's no doubt Calgary has been somewhat the focus of the NHL world. Since free agency opening last week, Johnny Gaudreau leaving, Matthew Kachuk potentially to be traded or at least heading into his final season with the Flames. Uh, but the Ottawa Senators have made some big-time moves. And joining us to talk about it is our good friend Sean Simpson from TSN 1200 Ottawa and also CTV. Am I right, Simmer? You're a big TV star now. I see that all the time on your social media. Well, I just promote it. Do a little sports hit there. It's going international. So, and I want the listeners to know that you're the you were the original Rod the Bod before Rod Brindamore came along. So he just copied <laughs> oh, yeah, your name. Right. <laughs> oh, hilarious! That's real funny. Buttering me up, Simmer. I love it. Um, yeah. Hey, can you? Let's start with the Sands, and then I just want to swing it back on the Flames yeah. for a second. What an off season! Is it enough to get him into the playoffs? Do you think? Uh, you know what? We'll see about that, Rod. But I'll tell you what, they've turned around the franchise. The perception, nobody could have thought all these things would happen from the buyout of White to Delzado to moving Matt Murray to all of a sudden bringing in Debrinket Drew, still looking for a right-handed D. But this has been an absolute transformation. And when you look at the team on paper, do I think they're good enough to make the playoffs? They're close. But more than anything, it's just everything that's happened here. Daniel Alfred's getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, you have the approval of Bretton Flats. This just been a complete turnaround for the franchise much needed been covering this for 10 years and hey they got a hell of a hockey team but more importantly i think people are regaining faith in the brand and i think uh, a more pride in the brand so it's been a real exciting last month here in ottawa it is uh been a great off season and it is exciting and i'm following it all through your social media yeah. just so you know i love i love the coverage but i so johnny gaudreau comes out with a letter to calgary today in the players yeah. tribune you've heard of it if you haven't seen it and like Claude Giroux went home, Johnny yeah. left here to get closer to home. You've worked in the yeah. NHL yeah. front office. How much do hometown players, how much are they coveted by teams? How much do they investigate that? I think it's super overrated. Uh, you know, and we ended up having Mark Mathot come home. It was great. Then Mark loved going to Dallas. Uh, you know what? It has to be the right fit. And Claude Giroux isn't necessarily finished in his career. He's 34 years old, but it's the right fit at the right time. He's also making good money. When I worked for the, the Leafs during the terrible years of 04 to 08, we brought Lynn Ross home and lots of other guys, Jeff O'Neill, but they were pretty much done in their career. So it's got to be a, have a fit. It's got to make sense. And in the case of Johnny Hockey, it's just kind of hard to understand. Was it turning down? the eight years in Calgary and then realizing, gosh, it's not going to be there in New Jersey. Something strange had to happen for him to end up signing in Columbus, put that much money or leave that much money much on the table. So I find that unique, Rob. But like I said, don't force it. If it fits, if it works, in the case of Drew, I think it does. But beyond that, it's real overrated. We hear people in Ottawa, ah, oh, Willie here wants to come back to Ottawa. I'm like, listen, I think he's doing just fine in South Florida. If it works and a guy wants to come back, so be it. But don't force it. Well, um, you've got one Kachuk there in Ottawa, and all this yeah. stuff that buzzes out there that it would, we could have two Kachuks on our top line in Ottawa. Yeah. What's yeah. your read on the Matthew Kachuk situation? Because you understand these contracts far better than I. Where well, do you see the, Kachuk, I, I the Matthew Kachuk thing going? I don't see it going anywhere. I pray that it isn't happening. This is Brady Kachuk's team. I'll tell you a funny story about the Janssens in Long Island back in the day. They had Kenny Janssen, the defenseman, forever they wanted to get Jorgen Janssen, his brother. But I found out when they got them, the wise didn't get along. How did it work for the Stahl brothers in Carolina? This is Brady's team. There's no need for Matthew to come here. I don't believe it for a minute. And with DeBrincat making $9 million and all the other things going on, I honestly think it would be a big mistake. So I'm hoping that's not the case. They've got a good chemistry. They've got a young group. Brady's the captain. He doesn't need his big brother coming to Ottawa. So I, I wouldn't say I'm not believing it, but I, I just don't see it working. And, and I, I honestly, I think at the end of the day, he's going to end up in St. Louis regardless. Well, the Flames haven't had a captain since Giordano left, but I would suggest, having watched half their games this year uh, live, that it is Matthew Kachuk's team. So when I say where it's going, do you think yeah. he ever wears a Flames jersey again? 
from what you can see? You know, I don't know. I mean, Brad is certainly in a real tough spot here. And I kind of look at this understanding. Listen, okay, at the end of the day, if he wants to go back to St. Louis, if that's what he's doing and doesn't want to sign in Calgary, what are you going to do? You could trade him to another team. They know he's only going to get him for a year. So there's not a lot of leverage for the Calgary Flames. And I even said today, I wouldn't rule out him going to St. Louis, signing a one-year deal for less money and then extending from there. But like I said, Calgary's in a tough spot. And one of the things here you learn, and I know with Johnny Hockey, they had no choice choice but never let a guy go in the last year of his contract but in this particular case because of the money because of the situation depending on the word that the agent's putting out like i said they'll get value for him and maybe you just take him to the trade deadline and trade him as a rental anyway uh, but as to how it plays out i'm not sure but unfortunately i don't think calgary's in a very good position rod well and i wonder how they <clears throat> could change that that's the one there's a lot of heat on the flames in this town for these guys yeah. potentially headed elsewhere how would you have changed it when they're Americans that I've said because of family, we don't want to play here anymore. Well, I, I don't think Brad does a great job. You know what? Last year, you go into a final year. I wouldn't have let that happen with Goudreau, but the season started great. You're finally winning, and you say to yourself, hey, we're going to take our chances. And if Johnny was giving them the vibe that, hey, maybe he was going to stay, which it sounded like he was, I think it's a real tough spot to be. I don't think it's a reflection on Calgary. I know the heat's on, but if players don't want to play from Pierre-Luc Dubois, and I won't just say this is a Canadian thing, Rick Nash didn't want to be in Columbus. We always kind of feel as Canadians, oh, guys don't want to be here. Hey, this can happen in lots of different situations it's real tough this is the business of hockey right now i think it's more philosophical is that if kachuk decides to go rod i think at that point if you're calgary you regroup and go into a little bit of a rebuild that's the only difference for me but i, I don't put any fault in the calgary flames and we all know it's a great city now as far as the COVID and the handling and everything else well that's out of our control that's up to the federal government but i would never discount the flames or the city of calgary the I don't either, uh, but the R word, I've heard it rebuild here in Calgary this week. Yeah. And I'm, but the general yeah. feeling is they're not there yet. Now I want to put one more to you. Yeah. Viewer wrote in earlier and said the Jets haven't been the same since Buffalo pulled the pin. And yeah. you look back, and I, I think I'd agree. And there again, how do you blame the Jets on that? Guy decided he didn't want to play hockey anymore. Well, and they also had the same year that Truba's wife could only be a doctor in the United States. So that's circumstantial. They also lost Myers on the right side. They made a hell of a trade with Truba. You know what? They had their window, though. The year they lost to Vegas was their opportunity. I'd say it was probably when Stassi also walked out the door. Um, you can factor in lots of things on that as to doing it. I, again, I think Chevy's done a hell of a job there. I think what it proves, Rod, for a lot of teams, first of all, how hard it is to win. We've seen with Colorado. The other part is how small the windows can end up being for many, many many reasons, including contractual, but I don't think this is some big epidemic, and we still have a little bit of the Chris Pronger syndrome in Canada, and like I said, there's lots of Americans, lots of Europeans that love coming to Canada and having great careers. Oh, isn't that a fact? Oh, Simmer, we could talk about this all day. As a matter of fact, just this yeah. morning, guy here at the casino, when I walked security, he's like, we don't have a problem with the Russians. They want to be here. We don't have a problem with the Swedes. They want to be here. It's the yeah. Americans. Yeah. Is it an yeah, American remember, thing? Remember, Pronger remember, was remember, Canadian. Remember, yeah, remember when Keith Kachuk went to Winnipeg and loved playing there? Remember when Bill Guerin and Doug Waite were there? Remember when Gary Suter and all those great Flames players, including Bob Johnson, who was the coach, all loved playing? Like I said, yeah, I don't believe that. These can be certain. And one thing I said today, it's it's also different. If you've got a young single hockey player that's playing, but sometimes when you enter in family, family dynamics can certainly be a factor. And, and that can factor in a little bit. But like I said, it, it doesn't happen all that often. You look at Austin Matthews, appears to be having a blast playing in, in Toronto. And I think there's a hey, look at a guy like Wheeler is signed on for life to play for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, yeah, but the players are different. They're different now. When you mention oh. those guys, Suter and Keith and yeah, yeah oh, sure, right? sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Simmer, enjoy the rest of the summer. Appreciate the insight. This has been awesome. All right, cheers, brother. Have a great day, Rod. TSN 1200 Ottawa's Sean Simpson. When we come back, we will investigate the news of the day. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have pra canceled today's practice due to the COVID outbreak of their players and the team general manager, Jeremy O'Day, will address it later on today. That and all these other things, when we come back, you're watching the ERP show on Game Plus TV. We're live streaming on YouTube. And of course, there's 24-hour sports radio streaming right now at rodpeterson.com. 
Have you subscribed to The Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues, and the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. owners and marketers okay we know you think we're pretty cool that's why we want you to share in the coolness factor partner with the rod peterson show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself take advantage of our many cost effective commercial and promotional opportunities tell the world about your business yes the world thanks to game plus tv and the rod peterson digital network contact us today and find out how you can be a part of canada's fastest growing sports talk show the rod peterson show Beautiful day here in the gateway to the foothills, Southern Alberta. It is the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network. And uh, I have a news update here, uh, breaking news as we bring in Darren Moose DuPont. And we're, we've been doing, we've been handing the show over to the viewers and uh, everybody other than me all day. So I'm going to hand this over to you, Moose. Do you want the good news or the bad news first to lead off this new, this sports update? Give me the, give me the good like? news. Let's start good. Okay. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers were big winners on and off the field last season. Winnipeg capped the CFL's return in 2021 with a second straight Grey Cup title. Wednesday morning, the community-owned club reported an overall operating profit of $2.1 million for last season. CFL oh, didn't yes. play in 2020 due to the global pandemic. It returned to action last season with a 14-game season. The Bombers' revenue totaled $32.8 million in 2021. 
Team President Wade Miller said in a statement, our revenue for the year is at 90% of total revenue in 2019. This is astonishing to be so close to pre-pandemic revenues, even with the reduction to the CFL schedule. Now, do you want the bad news? Hit me. Oh, no. Wah, wah, wah. Six more Saskatchewan Rough Rider players have tested positive for COVID-19 since Tuesday, bringing the total number of infected players on the team to 10 and casting uncertainty over Saturday's game. According to a statement from the team issued Wednesday morning, the new infections led to the cancellation of Wednesday's practice. At this stage, the team said a decision hasn't been made on whether Thursday's practice or even Saturday's game against the visiting Toronto Argonauts will go ahead as scheduled. Now stick with me from the CEBL. The Scarborough Shooting Stars wrote a strong first quarter to defeat the Edmonton Stingers 97-74 on Tuesday night. And the Newfoundland Growlers wrote a strong fourth quarter performance for a 94-80 road win over the Ottawa Blackjacks at TD Place Tuesday night. It was Newfoundland's first ever road win. I hope they kept up all moose. There you go. Uh, This sports update for the 2022 World Juniors. Be in Edmonton to see the next generation of international hockey stars and hear the roar of the crowd. Tickets on sale now for as low as $40 at HockeyCanada.ca. For Ballers Rec Room, your official home of Slow Pitch, open Wednesday to Sunday. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. Said it a million times, I've been devoting doling out all kinds of recovery advice today moose free of charge for you all i was like my dad he would just walk around sprinkling knowledge everywhere you're either going forwards or you're going backwards in life that's not my dad's that's mine and the winnipeg blue bombers are clearly going forwards the saskatchewan rough riders are clearly going backwards with this your take on this news on this wednesday yeah i would right now not be making plans for saturday yeah i really wouldn't i mean it is Wednesday. They got six more players. We haven't seen it go the, the other way yet. So we're probably going to see more players affected, infected tomorrow. Um, it's just a guess. And I would think the game's probably not going to play on Saturday as scheduled. It might be a Monday game or a, you know, a Tuesday. I don't really know what the league's going to do here, but uh, I would be surprised right now if the game would go ahead as normal. Max in Winnipeg says this rider thing is not looking good. New. Um, on a more positive note, have you seen any CFL Slurpee cups at Slurpees at 7-Elevens near you? I'm seeing them all over social media now. Good, good. I haven't, but I haven't ventured out to, uh, to 7-Eleven lately. So maybe that'll be on my afternoon list of things to do is to head over to 7-Eleven. It's not too far away. I used to try to have a Slurpee a day. Back in the day, uh, <laughs> a long time ago, and now I just try and keep it to a coffee a day or mm. coffee every day, depends on how much. But when you find out that it's frozen diabetes juice, it kind of ruins the fun of it. But you can have yeah. the odd one from time to time. I know we've had this discussion before. 7 Eleven actually weighed in on it. What is your favorite Slurpee flavor? Everybody, in the time we have left, we have five minutes left. What's your favorite Slurpee flavor? Cream soda. But I like to mix if there's a, like, I like to do the mix. Blue, uh, the cream soda, purple, or pink, I mean, and uh, orange. So I like to mix those three together. No dark, no Pepsi or Coke in that, or Dr. Pepper? Never, 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 never. You psycho, psycho. (laughs) It is, of course... Oh, it begins and ends with Dr. Pepper. Anytime yeah. I walk in a 7-Eleven, I'm checking the Slurpee machine to see if they got <laughs> Dr. Pepper. I'm probably not even going to order it or buy it, but I love it. For some reason, I don't know how this came up, but BW in Edmonton says Calgary has the biggest population of Americans outside of the USA, over 100,000 living in the Stampede City. How about that? From my cousin Christine in Medicine Hat. She says, Lime. Same says Max. Stacy Champagne watching at Access World Headquarters in Regina says, Root Beer. That's not easy to find. You don't see Root Beer Slurpees very often, do you? I don't know. Phyllis in Winnipeg says, Cream Soda and Grape depending on my mood. 
How about that? Thank you, Phyllis, for weighing in on that. (laughs) From Young Hoggy in Tirana. Oh, Calgary, sorry. Says, a mixture. Anything but Coke or Pepsi. Um... Yeah, that's get them in, get them in, quick, quick, quick. I feel like we should be getting gift cards to 7-Eleven and awarding them to viewers. What's That'd your favorite Slurpee? In a court? From Jennifer at the Four Seasons, she says, root beer, root beer, Dr. Pepper, grape, or Mountain Dew. No, you can't do that. What if you walked into 7-Eleven and on tap was root beer, Dr. Pepper, grape, or Mountain Dew? You got to pick one. One, you don't walk into the ballot box and vote for Biden, Trump, the alternative candidate. You don't vote right for Harper, Trudeau, whoever the NDP's try. Oh, Mr. Singh, one. Okay. <laughs> it's a heck of a lot of fun. <clears throat> 90 seconds left. Uh... What else you got, Moose? What are you What are you getting up to for the rest of the day? Oh my gosh, uh, just a few things, couple meetings on the business side. But I want to get out and enjoy some of the sunshine. If it's not going to rain, I'm just looking out the window. It actually, looks not so bad today. So get out, play some tennis, and uh, get ready for uh, what's going to be a real fun rest of the weekend of the CFL schedule. Jim in Pilot Butte, sorry, Belgoni writes in, and last minute of play in the RP show. Last minute of play. Jim says Coke and lime mix together. You could call that climb. And he says, why no diet cola Slurpees? You want to you want to take a stab at that one? Because I don't know. I, I, I don't got I don't have one. No, there'd be no diabetes in there. There's no sugar. Right. They could they could sell a million of them. There'd be no flavor yeah. in it. That's, That's why. Right. Um, I feel like we can close down. I don't know that we will, but I'm just suggesting we close down the World Juniors Contest for the week because we've got so many entrants and a lot of guys and gals entering every day. But anyways, we'll talk about that in our meetings. Great show, guys. Thanks, Moose. We'll see you tomorrow. Great job. See you tomorrow. See the rest of you tomorrow, noon Eastern, here on Game Plus TV. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Approved. Sold. Dundee. Hell yes. Ah.